The trail was steep, winding, relentless, but I pushed on, eager to reach the summit before sunset. My backpack felt heavy, but the thrill of the climb kept me going. The air grew cooler as I ascended, the familiar scent of pine needles filling my nostrils. The sunlight, dappled and shifting through the canopy, painted fleeting patterns on the forest floor. The mountain loomed large, a silent giant testing my resolve. Each step was a victory, a testament to my endurance. The higher I climbed, the more the world seemed to fall away. The sounds of civilization faded, replaced by the whisper of the wind through the trees. A sense of solitude enveloped me, peaceful and profound. I paused to catch my breath, taking a long drink from my water bottle. The taste was cool and refreshing, invigorating me for the rest of the climb. As I resumed my journey, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. A strange unease settled over me, sending a shiver down my spine. The woods seemed to grow quiet, the only sound the beating of my own heart. The forest floor was carpeted in a thick layer of fallen leaves, their colors muted by the encroaching shadows. And there, scattered amongst the decaying foliage, were the toadstools. Bright crimson caps, dotted with white, stood out against the muted browns and greens. They were beautiful, in a strange and unsettling way. I recognized them instantly, of course, Amanita muscaria, fly agaric, their vibrant color a clear warning of the toxins they contained. I knew better than to touch them, let alone eat them, but their presence here, so numerous and so vibrant, filled me with a sense of unease. As I continued my ascent, the toadstools seemed to multiply. They lined the path, their crimson caps glowing in the fading light. The forest itself seemed to be closing in, the trees pressing closer together, their branches intertwining overhead. The air grew heavy, thick with the scent of damp earth and decaying vegetation. There was a stillness to the woods now, an unnatural quiet that sent chills down my spine. The wind, which had been a constant companion throughout my hike, had vanished. Even the birdsong had ceased. It was as if the forest itself was holding its breath, watching me, waiting. I emerged into a clearing, a small patch of open ground surrounded by towering trees. The sun, now low in the sky, cast long shadows across the clearing, twisting the familiar shapes of trees into grotesque caricatures. And then I saw him. He stood at the edge of the clearing, his back to me, a tall, gaunt figure shrouded in shadow. He wore a long, dark coat that reached his ankles, and a wide-brimmed hat obscured his features. He didn't move, didn't even seem to breathe. He just stood there, a dark silhouette against the dying light. For a moment, I froze. My heart pounded in my chest, my breath catching in my throat. Fear, cold and paralyzing, gripped me. Who was this man, and what was he doing here in the middle of nowhere? I considered calling out to him, but something in his stillness, in the way he seemed to blend into the shadows, filled me with dread. Turning, I ran. I didn't care about the summit anymore, didn't care about the beauty of the mountain. All I cared about was putting as much distance between myself and that clearing as possible. The rough terrain slowed me down, but I didn't stop. I couldn't. Not with the image of that figure burned into my mind, the forest seemed to conspire against me. The branches reaching out like grasping claws, the undergrowth snagging at my feet. I stumbled and fell, the impact jarring my bones. But I couldn't stay down, not now. Scrambling to my feet, I pushed on, my lungs burning, my legs screaming for respite. But the figure was faster. I could hear him behind me, his footsteps heavy and measured, gaining on me with every stride. Terror lent speed to my flight, but it wasn't enough. A sharp pain shot through my leg, a searing agony that sent me crashing to the ground. I tried to get up to keep running, but my leg buckled beneath me. I lay there, gasping for breath, my muscles cramping, my vision blurring. Through the pain, I could hear the figure approaching. His footsteps were slow, deliberate, as if he savored my terror. I closed my eyes, bracing myself for the inevitable, but it never came. When I finally dared to open my eyes, he was gone.